Welcome to the Newsome MMA podcast, partnered with Heavy Duty Fight Management. I'm your host as always, Newsome, and tonight I'm joined by UFC light heavyweight prospect Alexander Rakic ahead of his fight against Jimmy Manoa at UFC Stockholm on June the 1st. Alex, thank you so much for joining me. How are you tonight, bro? Hey, what's up, guys? And I'm very good. And yeah, I'm very excited about the interview, the podcast. And yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So before we get into UFC Stockholm, Alex, on reflection of your last fight, what were your own thoughts about the win against Devin Clark at UFC 231? Oh, yeah, that was a weird fight for me. And I did a, a couple of, I mean, one big mistake I did in the last camp because I was uh, preparing in, in the American top team. And uh, I, did, I have the best training camp ever here amazing sparring partners amazing uh training here but uh, i did a mistake i didn't bring my i didn't brought my boxing coach so we was not working for six weeks and of course he knows me he knows me the best and i know him and we we're working already three three years together so we was not able to train in this camp so we was just meet meeting each other in the fight week and yeah in the fight if if someone watched the fight i was here but my reaction was not not the best so i got a early cut from devin with the left hook he dropped me and then he threw some knees and some illegal knees so uh yeah it, at the beginning of the fight it went uh, not good for me but uh, I managed everything very well and finished him in the first round, end of the first round, and was happy about the performance. But this uh, mistake is going to not happen to me any anymore. And now at this camp is everything covered and I'm going to be in the best shape of my life for the next upcoming fight. Yeah, you've got your boxing coach with you there now, right, haven't you? Yes, uh, he's coming in four days. Here okay. at the uh, American Top Team, you're going to stay with me and we're going to work here, then fly back to Vienna two weeks before the fight uh, and, and keep training. And fin I'm going to finish my camp in Vienna uh, and then fly to Stockholm at the fight week. Awesome. And, and just really quickly, just coming back to your, your fight with Devin Clark, you, you mentioned it just there with the illegal knees. Now, I personally rewatched that specific moment. I hit the slow motion button on Fight Pass and I counted seven illegal knees to your head. Did you know that they were illegal at the time? And if so, what were your thoughts? And did you say anything to the referee at the time or afterwards? Uh, yeah, yes, I knew that the, the, the knees were illegal. In the first the first two, three knees was was okay, and then I put my my both hands on the floor and try to make him like a trap to throw illegal to throw illegal knees so the the referee uh, take him away from, from from me and the uh, referee I don't know where he's where he where his eyes was um, I don't know man and when I realized. He does. He he don't do nothing, you know. And then I I said to myself, okay, I have to I have to finish this by my own, and don't leave it to the to the referee. And yeah, I I talked to him after the fight, you know. But even the UFC uh, the UFC uh, told me like after the fight they are really surprised about this uh, this mistake of the referee because. It's it's like not one or two knees. It was seven knees, you know, and it's it's a lot. But it is what it is, you know. I don't in the future, or I'm not gonna leave it to the referee or to the judges anymore. So I have to I have to deal it by myself. Absolutely. So Alex, let's talk UFC Stockholm. You're fighting the number ten ranked light heavyweight in the world, and England's own Jimmy Manoa. You know you sat just outside of the official UFC rankings right now. So with the UFC delivering you a fight with Manoa, does this send you a strong message of how highly the UFC think of you right now? Yes, of course, man. I I, I want to thank the UFC that I got the opportunity to have a number for my next fight. And I was um, after the Hamburg fight. I calling out. Uh, I calling out a top 15 guy. So I didn't. I didn't get it after Hamburg. 
and now after after UFC Toronto 231, uh, I got it already. Uh, finally, three and zero in the UFC, and I think I more I'm more than ready for for the top guys, and I deserve it. And Jimmy Manua, I respect him a lot, and he's uh, ranked ten, even better, you know. And yeah, cannot wait for June first in Stockholm against Jimmy Manua. Absolutely, and. Both you and I know, Alex, that in the lead up to getting you a fight, a number of fighters add themselves to that long list of fighters that turn you down, and this time was no different. So, absolute credit to Manua for always being a savage. But how did this fight come about, and what were your thoughts when you got matched with the top ten fighter? Man, when I first when I when I hear the name, I was I was surprised, and I was in in the other way, I was very happy I got it. You know. Um, I think Jimmy, Jimmy, he has a three-fight losing streak, so he had to to take a fight. He had to take a fight with uh, with a guy he's not uh, who's not ranked. So, yeah, I think he has he hasn't the other choice. And uh, we all know uh, uh, Sweden and Stockholm is is the second second home of of, of Jimmy Manua. He's per- He's, he's preparing there for his uh, all his fight all his UFC fights, so it's like a, a little bit like a, a home advantage for him. And I think uh, he he wants really bad the fight in Stock to fight in Stockholm. And yeah, they got offered they offered me him, and I think he I think he wants more to fight in Stockholm. He doesn't care who is he fighting, and that's the reason he took the fight. I think. Absolutely. So let's talk preparation. You know, you're back in Florida, ATT, you've already said that. You're doing your camp there and then you're going to finish it off back in Austria before you travel over to uh, Stockholm in Sweden. So yes. how have you settled in this time around at ATT, Alex? Which guys are you working with the most in preparation yeah. for Manua? Yeah, uh, I start my camp uh, in Vienna, in Austria, with my team and my my, my coaches. And then... Uh, I switch it off here to American Top Team in Florida for five weeks, and these five weeks I'm gonna use uh, to do a lot of sparring as I can, and then fly back to Vienna to finish my camp there. Ah, here you know I don't have to introduce American Top Team. A high level of of fighters here: Junior Dos Santos and uh, PFL heavyweight champion Felipe Lins and 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 many 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 guys you know on the on the mat every day so uh, I have the best best sparring partners and uh, I think I'm gonna be more than ready for uh, UFC Stockholm first of June and yeah that's it uh, just a just a quick question as well is uh, is Tiago Santos there right now at ATT because I thought that might be a, a guy that you could maybe pick uh, pick his brains as he's fought Jimmy Manua not so long ago. Yes, uh, the, he's actually he's not here right now. He's in Brazil. Uh, the, it will be good if he's here, so I can uh, train with with him and spar with him and 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 talking to him. But I know Jimmy as well. We 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 trained four years ago. Sure. I was. Uh, yeah, I was I was two times in in the All Star Gym in Sweden. I trained with him once, and I know Jimmy, and I know what what I can expect from him, and I know where he's dangerous. And um, yeah, like like you said, uh, would be good if Santos is here, but he is now in Brazil. I think he's gonna come uh, in the next few days to start his camp for John Jones, and yeah. Cool, good stuff, man. And is there a particular part of your game that you're really sharpening up during this camp, or are you just adjusting your training specifically for Jimmy? No, I I train for every camp. I train everything, like uh, every segment of the of the fight. But of course, there is some some every fighter has uh, do some mistakes and and has some holes. And of course, I I, I study Jimmy with my team and. We we prepare. We're gonna prepare for his his mistakes, and but basically I'm training everything like uh, wrestling, grappling, striking, uh, conditioning, like like usual. 
Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting you've just mentioned about trying to spot some holes in Manoa's game. You know, I know you keep a very close eye on everything that happens in the light heavyweight division. So have you and your coaches seen those holes that you're willing to and prepared to exploit in Jimmy Manoa's game? Yes, for sure. I mean, like I said, I trained with Jimmy four years ago and I know what I can expect and I know his holes from that at that time. Interesting. But four, but four years is a long time. Uh, so I can say about myself in four years, I improve not 100 percent. I improve 200 yeah. uh, percent. My skills are getting better. I am physically more stronger. I'm mentally more stronger. I am. Uh, I'm older, but not too old. So I am in the in the in the perfect perfect age, and I don't know. Maybe Jimmy Jimmy uh, level leveled his uh, his skills also up, but he is. Uh, we have not for, to forget he is 39 years old, so he's not the youngest in the sport, but he's still dangerous. He's a dangerous. He's not for for a reason the uh, ranked number 10 on the world. So. I'm very excited about the fight. I absolutely agree. And I think I know the answer to this next question, but I'll ask it anyway. Who's going to be in the corner on the night, Alex? Is it going to be the usual dream team? Yes, there will be my my, my dream team, uh, my boxing coach, Yuri, my MMA and grappling coach, Roberto, and my performance coach, uh, strength and conditioning and nutrition, Richie Staudner. So I'm not going to change these guys because... They do a phenomenal job and we are, like like you said, we are a dream team and now we are together uh, with a record 4-0. and So, yeah, I'm not going to change anything. Good stuff, man. And without giving too much away for obvious reasons, how do you see this fight going down, Alex? Do you have a prediction for us? I say I'm going to finish Manuel in the second round. That's my That's my prediction. Interesting. Now, obviously, we never look past an opponent, but with a win against Jimmy Manoa at UFC Stockholm, what will be next for you? Because you'll have just taken out the number 10 guy in the world. You know, everybody knows what's going to be next. When I beat Jimmy, I'm going to probably I'm going to take his place. I'm going to be ranked 10. So there is just one one way and this is forward. So next top 10, I don't care where and uh, who. And yeah, this is just one way and this is forward. No, we don't look back. Absolutely. It's interesting you mentioned the who there. Will you be calling any fighter out on the mic if you get that win? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so because, you know, the guys, they are in front of me. They, everybody everybody knows who who is that guy, guys, you know, in front of me. So it doesn't matter who it is, you know, it has to be just a... a he has to be just better ranked than me. So, yeah. For sure. And Alex, as you're aware, there are a lot of huge light heavyweight fights coming up over the next couple of months. So just as a fun extra to this interview, I was wondering if uh, we could get your predictions quickly for who wins each fight, if that's cool with you. Yes, of course. We can do it. Awesome. So first up, the light heavyweight fight at UFC Stockholm. We've got Volkan Ozdemir versus Elia Latifi. Who have you got in that yeah. one? Uh, I... I pick uh, Ilir Latifi. I train with Ilir. I know him very, uh, very well. A strong, strong, strong wrestler. And uh, we know that Volkan had, has a problem with wrestlers. He fought against DC and uh, DC is the, uh, a great wrestler. So I pick Ilir at this, in this fight. Nothing against Volkan. He's a great guy and a great fighter. But I see the fight is going... Uh, I see the fight going to be on the ground. Ilir going to take him down and hold him down. And yeah, for sure. And next up, still on the uh, the card at UFC Stockholm, we've got the main event, Alexander Gustafsson versus Anthony Smith. Who have you got there? Uh, I pick Gustafsson. Uh, I think he's uh, after his, his, his last loss against John Jones, he, he got more motivated and he man this guy is he's is just a, a, a awesome fighter i respect him and i was also a, i was also able to train with him and this guy is an athlete and an animal you know and of course smith has a he's a, for his age he's is very very experienced fighter but um, 
I think Gustafsson going to win that fight. Interesting. And over to UFC 239, we've got Jan Blachowicz against Luke Rockhold, who's making that move up to 205. Who have you got in that fight? Ah, this time I have to be with my uh, uh, European uh, European uh, <laughs> friends. Sure. I don't know Jan Blachowicz um, personally, but I think Jan is going to be... Uh, Young's gonna uh, win that fight, man. This guy, uh, he's unpredictable, you know. S- when we saw the la- last night, um, Jack Hammerson and Jacare, who was who was thinking uh, Jack Hammerson gonna win against Jacare, you know? And that's that's the same thing here in that fight. I think um, there is a lot of hype of Luke Luke Rockhold. Of course, he's an awesome fighter and a former middleweight champion. But light heavyweight is a different, uh, different uh, weight class. So uh, I don't know how Rockhold's gonna manage that. But I'm gonna be with Jan Blahovic at this fight. Yeah. Awesome. And finally, the last one, the big one, the light heavyweight title fight at UFC 239. John Bones Jones versus Thiago Maheta Santos. Obviously, you know Maheta Santos very well. Who have you got in that one? Yes, I know Maheta very well. We trained together in the last camp, and he's also a guy from ATT. Uh, for sure, in this fight, I would, I would, uh, I would like uh, Maheta wins the wins the wins the belt and 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 shock the world, you know. And we know uh, Maheta is able to do that because he does it in the last fi- last three fights, and he's. His fighting style is like interesting, you know. He's he's very risky and he keeps winning uh, with this style. But on the other other way, we all know John Jones is the best fighter of the world and his defense is so good. And um, he's not for not he's for, for for me he's the pound for pound number one, you know, fighter of the world. And I am in this fight. I am for Macheta, but I think John Jones gonna 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 win that fight again. Uh, not again. He gonna win and defend his belt again. For sure. Thank you for that insight, man. That was uh, that was really cool. And finally, Alex, before I let you go, I'm just gonna give you the opportunity to shout out anything or anybody that you need to. So sponsors, coaches, training partners, family, friends. I know this yeah. puts a lot of fighters on the spot. There's no rush. Take your time, and the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I would uh, first of all I will uh, to say thank you uh, for you to to have the opportunity to do the interview with you and thank you and just want to say um, thank you for the best management on the on the on the on the planet heavy duty management and and Carl Mason and just uh, want to say thank you for uh, the American top team. They treat me really, really well here. I have uh, the best training over here and getting ready. Also for my coaches, my, like you said, the dream team, my boxing coach, Yuri, Roberto and Richie. And yeah, of course, my sponsors, Jim King, uh, Love Hamp, Concussion Pro One, uh, yeah, that's it, man. And just uh, want to say, cannot wait to see my family and my my wife. And yes, but first I have to finish the job in first uh, first first of June in Stockholm, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take the summer a little bit off and focus more on on my family on on me. So yeah, I would say thank you all of you all of you guys and. Also, I want to thank my 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 gym in in Vienna, where I where I also prepare for my for my fights, Gym 23, and all my uh, uh, teammates and and uh, teammates and and coaches over there. So without them, nothing that would be possible. So thank you guys. Absolutely. And once again, Alex, thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. I wish you the best of luck on June the first at UFC Stockholm. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. Thank you.